At Mills on Wheels Collin County, we're thankful for everyone who supports our mission to combat hunger and isolation. Financial support allows us to ensure that meals are delivered to our senior neighbors daily. Beyond the meal, we provide shelf-stable items, essential toiletries, emergency meals, nutritional supplements, durable medical equipment, and pet food for their furry companions. We are equally concerned about their health and well-being, especially in rural areas where the harsh reality of food deserts exists. You see, a food desert is an area with limited accessibility to healthy or affordable food. This scarcity exacerbates health disparities and social economic challenges, leaving our seniors with few options for maintaining a balanced diet. People's choices are limited about what to eat because of limited options and what they can afford. According to the Department of Agriculture, there is an increased number of residents in rural areas who are living about 10 miles away from their closest grocery store. That is why we engage in vital partnerships with area first responders who are committed to their communities. Ensuring our seniors are fed, feeling safe, and are not alone. In return, keeping seniors independent in their homes, their families, and communities. We've been involved in Meals on Wheels, Collin County for a number of years. Uh, we really got into being intimately engaged with them probably in uh, 2022 when we combined a program that they use uh, within our community with the state uh, of Texas emergency uh, notification program. It's called STEERS. The STEERS program uh, was developed after Hurricanes Rita and Katrina and it was designed to assist people that had needs during situations where evacuation was required, where they may have been without power, food, or any transportation for long periods of time. So that in the event of an emergency, uh, entities like the fire department can uh, reach out to them and find out how they're doing, what they need, or potentially get them evacuated. We have the firefighters periodically go sit down and have lunch uh, with the seniors that come to the community center for their social time. And uh, in addition to giving a presentation, uh, we'll typically just sit down and socialize with those individuals and, and listen to what they have to say, because it's important they still have a voice in our community. Princeton Fire Department, is a group of people out there trying to help our community whichever way we can. Traditionally as a fire service uh, through EMS services and of course embracing community programs, uh, working with Meals on Wheels. Our job is to engage the citizen, to educate the citizen, to make the community safer, you know, so that they feel like they're, they're we're part of them and they're part of us and, and not just you know, strictly a service out there where people serving. Our senior citizens is more of our at risk uh, in this community and having the ability to, to check on them and make sure they're healthier, make sure that their needs are being met and being able to go and to make sure that they're taking their medication, that their needs are being met and that uh, they're not dealing with this high impact situations that, that are dealt with on their own. This is a way for us to assist them and work with them to uh, just ensure their health. Uh, these people really enjoy that conversation piece and being able to sit down with these individuals and talk to them and spend time with them. Uh, you know, we've learned more about our community from just speaking to some of our residents than uh, you can get out of any textbook. Yeah, you know, first we will try to make phone calls, you know, uh, but if, you, if we can't get a hold of somebody by phone, then we'll legitimately load up and go out and, and knock on these people's doors and check on them right then and there. Uh, you know, it's in times of crisis, whether it's, whether it's just a, a major impact to the community or severe weather or anything, uh, one of the most important things we tell people to do is stay, stay indoors, stay inside. So these loved ones trying to get to their, you know, mothers, fathers, grandparents, uh, it's not easy, you know, it may not be easy for people to go and check on their loved ones. So us going out and knocking on the doors and, and making contact with these residents is, is, is amazing. We care and we care about our community. 
Uh, one of our logos, we have our mission statements and vision statements, but one of our logos is making a difference. You'll see making a difference on all of our business cards. You'll see it around our stations. And uh, I'd like people to know that's what we're here for. We are here to make a difference. Uh, make a difference in our community, to make a difference in people's lives individually, but uh, that we care and that we're here for them. When COVID hit, we had a lot of volunteers that could not deliver simply because of COVID. Um, they themselves are elderly that helped deliver, and so they couldn't get out. Um, we delivered those, and it was very helpful for the police department to deliver those because we were able to go and check on our elderly people. And it even during the summer times, uh, once we kind of got figured out that it uh, not only helped us check them out during COVID, it was we were able to keep an eye on those that don't say anything, they don't ask for help. Uh, so we were able to check on them and if they were in need, like house cleaning or medical care. Um, so when we figured out that we could go a little further when we were delivering, that's when we really started uh, taking up, up and helping a little bit more. We're such in a rural area that we don't have the benefits that other cities have. So it's really important that they get these hygiene items and extra staples that others may have access to that we don't have. We're just in an area, we don't, we don't have access to those things. Our, our seniors do not. So when they do get those things, it's very helpful for them just to have. I mean, I can't explain how, other than we're so rural. Like if they have doctor's appointments, if they don't have a, anybody nearby to take them from point A to point B for medical, or for physical therapy, they just can't go because there's no transportation here for them. You know, we want to protect our community and we want to be transparent with our community. We want to have a relationship with our community, but we also care about our community. We care about everybody in our community. And um, we, have a, we want to develop a relationship where everybody feels safe here, no matter the age. We feel, well, you know, we have a hometown here and we want people to feel like they're at home and they're, they're not by themselves. They have somebody to turn to. So I actually had the grand opportunity of meeting uh, Executive Director Tyson, and the Mills and Wheels had sort of come to a halt during COVID. And so we reignited that uh, with Mrs. Tyson coming in. She did an incredible job encouraging us to get involved again. So it was after COVID 2021 when we really came back full force. This is Friendly Farmersville, and so we're very cognizant of our, of our elderly. We have just under 300, 65 and over in disabled homes in our city. And so we're in the middle of a growing spurt here in Farmersville. And so our resources are spread thin already, but trying to grow and develop um, brings more issues with that. So having Meals on Wheels here, providing the services that you provide not just the meals but everything else that Meals on Wheels provides has been a great blessing to our community. Well any extra food, any supplies that are above and beyond what seniors are currently able to have on their budgets, their limited budgets, is critical for them. And we have a very independent group of elderly here in Farmersville so you have to be extremely proactive in providing them the things that they have need of because chances are they won't ask for it. But we, uh, we're excited that any resources that we can provide to them through Meals on Wheels uh, is, a, is a great thing for our city. Well, I would just like people to know about Farmersville, uh, that it's a, a distinctive treasure in the state of Texas. We have a rich heritage. Uh, our older uh, folks are obviously a part of that. So we, we'd like to honor our history and our heritage uh, while we're planning our future and, and trying to manage the growth that's coming out here. And, East Collin County and the elderly and taking care of them is a huge part of the heart of Farmersville. The challenges are unique in rural areas from accessibility of food, lack of transportation, limited medical providers, and loneliness our seniors face. We are thankful to have caring individuals like Chief Thomas Harvey, Captain Ben Hart, Chief Marsha Phillips, and Mayor Brian Weibold who come alongside of us and go over and beyond their respective communities to care for our seniors. Their tireless efforts paint a vivid picture of hope, 
illuminating the lives of those they serve with kindness and empathy that went above and beyond during the pandemic. So let's take a moment to acknowledge and celebrate these remarkable individuals. Their compassion and dedication not only saves the lives of our seniors, but also inspire us all to continue spreading hope and kindness in our communities.